Welcome to my shop. I'm Rob from Woodsy Summercraft. Today I'm doing a demonstration for the Wood Show Virtual Show 2020. It's definitely a different show than ever before, um, all being online. And uh, hopefully you guys are going to enjoy the presentation and uh, the rest of the show today and over the weekend. So what I've got is a piece of red oak. Right now it is a square. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle on it and take it to the bandsaw and we'll cut it into a circle and then we'll get it mounted on the lathe and we're going to turn a simple bowl. We're going to turn a simple bowl so that we can use maybe texture and color to enhance this uh, basic bowl just to make something a little bit more special. So let's get a circle cut and we'll get it on the lathe. So the first thing you want to do is decide which is going to be the front and the back of the bowl depending on the grain orientation. So I think that I want this to be the top of the bowl and this to be the bottom of the bowl. It's just my choice. Uh, you can go whichever way you want it to go. So this being the top of the bowl is the side that's going to be mounted to the face plate. It doesn't have to be exact because the lathe will take care of any any issues. So at this point I can use a compass to mark the size that I want. If you wanted a specific size then you could do that. If you just want to max out the piece of wood that you've got you can do that too. And there is my circle. Essentially we're looking at a seven and a half inch around by two and a half inches deep. So I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw and we'll get it cut. You want the smaller blade or the thinner blade basically for making those circumferences. If you have a half inch or three quarter blade it's just going to make it harder to make those turns and obviously you want a nice sharp blade especially with oak because oak is a particularly hard wood. So I'll bring you in, we'll get this cut and then uh, we'll move on to getting it mounted onto the lathe. And you can get it pretty close to round. Okay, so I have now got the center marked on the side of my bowl, which will be the top when it's complete. I've got my face plate here, which is a, an inch and a quarter uh, thread for the uh, spindle on this particular lathe. And uh, I'm going to be using every single one of those holes in the face plate with a machine screw. Um, never use um, drywall screws for this purpose, they're just not strong enough. So I will get this mounted on the piece of wood. Making sure they're all tight, snug them home. Okay. So this can now go on the lathe. So I'll hold this up to the lathe and I can turn it in from the back side. You can also turn the wood on whichever way you want to do it. And just make sure that that's nice and tight. Now if you plan on reversing this, if you plan on putting the lathe in reverse, you must put the set screws in. But you don't necessarily need them if you're just turning forward as I will be. Um, always turn the lathe down to the lowest speed before you turn it on and stand out of the line of fire. Starts off really slow, gives you an idea of how balanced it is. Um, it's pretty balanced but it obviously is out a little bit. Uh, we're going to get that turned and uh, trued up. So I cannot overemphasize how important it is to have a nice sharp tool. Uh, this Ellsworth ball gouge gives me nice swept back wings as you can see on the end of the tool and it is absolutely critical that your tools are sharp it's just going to make your turning experience 
that much more enjoyable. If you've got dull tools, then you're going to have to apply more force. If you apply more force, you could potentially have a problem. So using the uh, King Industrial 8-inch low-speed grinder and the Wolverine jig, which I have set up here. So using the Wolverine jig, I'll get this sharpened up so that it optimizes my turning experience. And with my safety glasses on, let the wheel get up to speed before you uh, start grinding. And really light, you don't have to go heavy on this. Okay. And there it is, a nice, clean, sharp, fresh edge to turn with. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to have a sharp tool. It's just gonna make your turning experience that much more enjoyable. So let's get to turning. So you have to decide whether you want to use a mortise or a tenon as well for the bottom of your bowl. If you turn a mortise, basically when you complete the underside, you're done. If you do a tenon, afterwards you might want to remove that tenon or shape it to become the foot. Your decision really. You need to know the size that you require according to the jaws you're going to use on your chuck. Basically you want to use the rule of thirds with the foot being approximately one third the size of the diameter of the top edge. It just makes it look nice. Um, I'm going to be using a tenon so I have to be just a little bit bigger for my tenon than the inside diameter of these jaws that I'm going to be using which is about an inch and a half. So I'm going to be just a little bit bigger than an inch and a half. So I've set my calipers. So you can do this with a tape measure however you really however you're comfortable with basically. Um, this is just the method I've been using because I'm pretty comfortable with bringing this in and just touching the bowl. So uh, you can see the center. You don't really need to mark it or anything with a pencil before. As soon as I turn it on, you can see the center. And I just want to be outside of that and I'll bring it in. If I start there, I want to line up this with the same mark. So you can see I'm really way off there. So I'm going to bring it in. And that's pretty good there. Okay, so I can now start taking off this corner. So I will nibble away at this corner and start making the shape. And I'm just going to go with a standard bowl shape, nothing fancy, um, just for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to start with the speed slow and bring it up to the, uh, a faster speed, safe so that it's not wobbling or anything, but I want the faster speed. The faster it is, the better it turns and the better it cuts. And I'll prove that to you. So if I just start going ahead and cutting here, this tool is going to have to move extremely slowly to make a decent cut. As you can see, there's quite a bit of tear out right here because of the slow speed. Now if I bring my speed up, I'll get a much cleaner cut. That was at about 450 RPM. So I don't want to work through the, the wobble. I want to be just before the wobble. If, see it's wobbling there and I go faster, the wobble goes away. But I want to be just before the wobble, if that makes sense. So I also need to be cutting on center so I'm a little bit high in fact. That's a little bit closer to center.
you can already see that that is a much cleaner cut just by increasing the speed so I'm gonna work my way around to the edge removing all of the excess wood so this is oak so it's a very open grain wood so we can use some embellishing wax on this which I think I'm going to do so I'll probably use some dye some colors and also some uh, embellishing wax to enhance that open grain increasing the speed a little bit See if I can increase my speed. Just under a thousand RPM. So these cuts are extremely clean. There's a few ridges with stops and starts, but uh, this is just the roughing out phase. Um, once I get to my finishing cuts, I'll probably be using some shear scraping, which we'll get to. Clean that edge up, it's a sharp edge. Okay, so I've basically got the bowl rounded off. I'll bring you in and we'll make the tenon. Okay, so I'll be using this beading parting tool to uh, remove some of the wood to make the tenon. I, could I can probably increase the speed at this point too. Just over a thousand RPM. And we'll do a little bit of shear scraping to clean that up. And you want to drop the tool rest to do shear scraping and then drop the bottom of the handle as much as you can as well. And after a little bit of shear scraping, now you've got a pretty smooth finish. It does need sanding. There's some minor tool marks, not very many, but sanding will take care of them. We just have to make the dovetail in the uh, tenon so that the uh, jaws of the easy wood woodchuck can um, grab a hold of that. And then we can uh, sand it, turn it around, and do the inside. Now, um, finishing, normally I would finish it as I'm going. But uh, this piece here is really for demonstration of turning, so I'm not going to put any finish on it. I'm just going to sand it, and it's going to be unfinished. And I'll probably use it as a demo for the, uh, for the wood show, a live demo for the wood show, for colouring and embellishing. So here I'm just taking my skew, and again cutting on centre, so I've raised the tool rest a little bit. I'm just going to go straight in. And I'll make that small dovetail and it will flatten up that foot for me so that the jaws sit nice and flush on the bottom of the bowl. Once 
One other thing I want to mention is it's a good time to make a mark in the center, a little divot, so that when you go to remove the foot and you turn the bowl around, you have somewhere for the tailstock to go so that you can remove that foot. So using the skew again, that's it. Okay, so now I have the fun task of sanding this. Uh, it's a good time to use the, uh, the dust collector because sanding does create a lot of dust as you all know. So uh, I'll do that and then we'll come back and we'll check the circumference is nice and rounded and there's no flat spots before we move on. Okay, so this has now been sanded from 100 to 150, 220 and 320. Um, as you can see, there's no uh, tear out, no tool marks. And it is still open grain enough that I will be able to get some uh, embellishing wax in there. If I sand it too fine, then I'll lose the ability to do that. So uh, what I will need to do is clean this with denatured alcohol and then wire brush with a brass wire brush to open up those pores better to allow that embellishing wax to enter that open grain to really highlight it. Um, but it's, that's going to be after color as well. So uh, let's uh, now that we've got this sanded, I'm going to show you what I was referring to about flat spots on, the, on your uh, outside diameter of the bowl. So using a flat edge, you could use a tool or a ruler or a piece of flat wood that you are certain is straight. Basically, you just hold it against the wood like this and you work it around the bowl like this. And if, if at any point it stops, this is not. It's just a nice continuous movement around the side of the bowl. If at any point you stop, then you know you have a flat spot. And it's now that you need to address that to fix that. Um, like I say, I, I do not have a flat spot there. It is moving nicely around the whole bowl. It's just a little tip. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to be using the easy wood chuck with these jaws. They're dovetailed. There's no ridges in there to mark up the wood. Um, I have an adapter because uh, this comes with a one inch 8 TPI thread so my uh, spindle on my chuck is inch and a quarter 8 TPI so this adapter goes from inch and a quarter down to the one inch to accommodate this particular chuck but I do really like this chuck so now what I need to do is take this off the lathe and it should be fairly simple like that and put the chuck on again really simple now I do have the the little screws just to uh, little set screws to keep this on the uh, spindle only really need them if you're going in reverse um, and this chuck has the zoom ring which makes it nice and easy to do by hand initially. It's a good idea to make sure this is perfectly centered to bring the tail stock up. To get that perfectly centered. And you can turn that on low speed. Feel if this is per running perfectly true, which it is. And now I can tighten that up. Check it again, still feels really smooth. No movement in that, no wobble or anything. So making sure that's nice and tight. Now I can remove the tailstock. And again, if your bowl gouge isn't sharp, this is where you can have problems catching and uh, having to put too much force on your cut. The sharper your tool, the less force you need to push on the tool. You shouldn't be pushing on the tool, it should be cutting all by itself, just with guiding. So I'll remove the tailstock, and now I'll just remove this faceplate. Okay, so now I've got the bowl turned around. I've resharpened my bowl gouge. It's always best to sharpen it before you think it needs sharpening, that way it's always sharp. 
And what I'm going to do now is just shear scrape across the surface of this, just to true this up. And then if you look here, you can see there's a couple of imperfections on the edge, so I need to remove those so I can get down to a nice clean edge. And then be careful, this edge can be sharp, so just take the, take the sharp edge of that off, and then we'll go about hollowing it out. So again, starting at a slow speed, this is running perfectly true. I will bring the speed up to a nice comfortable speed that's fast enough that it will cut nicely. Just under a thousand RPM before it starts wobbling just a little bit. Take a quick look at that. You can see it still needs to be cut there and there a little bit. This blank was actually warped just a little bit when I uh, initially started. And that is now uh, trued up. I just need to remove just a little bit on this edge. I'm just going to take off that sharp edge because this edge will cut you if you're not careful. So I'm just going to bring my uh, tool rest around there and I'm just going to remove that sharp edge. Just like that. Now it's not sharp. So that's perfect. So again, it's uh, time to decide what you want to do with the inside. Do you want a wide rim, a slim rim? Um, how do you want to turn this bowl? Um, it's entirely up to you. Um, I don't want a particularly thick rim, maybe a quarter of an inch at the most. And then I'm going to try and follow the contour on the inside the same as the outside. And I do that mostly by eye looking from above. Um, the edge of this bevel here is what you're watching from above and we'll just follow that around and the tool needs a lot of room to maneuver around the lathe now that is a very greedy cut I'll bring you in you can take a look we can always lighten that up. Having such a sharp tool really does make all the difference for the kind of cut that you'll get. So I'm not pushing that at all, I'm just allowing the tool to cut the wood by itself. I'm just guiding it. going to continue doing this um, and I probably will sharpen the tool again before we get to the bottom of the bowl. Yeah that's about 1300. Now the tail stop can get in the way sometimes especially with a long tool.
Now I'm starting way over here with the back end of the tool way over there. Okay, so that was sharpened again. I was getting a little bit of chatter, a little bit of vibration on the end grain, and so I sharpened it again, and that went away. I also increased my speed to about 1500 RPM. Now the wall is pretty well even now, about a quarter of an inch, three-eighths of an inch. I just have to remove some more material from the bottom. So I use a pencil quite often to measure the depth of my bowl, to see where the bottom of the bowl is and I place this pencil over the top and look down so I can see the back of the bowl. Now I've probably got another easily half an, half an inch that I can cut, so maybe one or two more cuts and I'll be down to where I want to be. No, I think we're good at that depth there. Now, there will be a few tool marks in this, so it sometimes is a good idea to use some kind of a scraper, a shear scraper or something, just to remove any of those little ridges or tool marks. Now if you go over that with uh, a high grit, or a low grit I should say, like an 80 grit or 100 grit, you'll see where those high ridges are. So I have this really heavy duty negative rake bowl scraper, which is ideal for removing any little ridges or uh, divots in the surface. So uh, we'll just go over that real lightly with this, extremely light cuts. So that is the outside and the inside of the bowl turned. The outside is finished to 320 grit. The inside is not sanded as yet, but it's nice and smooth um, from the shear scraping with the negative rake scraper. And then now all I need to do is treat the rim to, to some kind of a shape and then do the sanding. And then basically this bowl is done, ready for finishing. Okay, so this edge was removed so it's not sharp. This inside edge, I haven't done that with yet. So I'm gonna do the same with that and just kind of uh, round it off a little bit, I think. I might have a little bit of a divot just in the center of this to give it some kind of shape. It's really up to the individual how you want to do this. Um, use your own imagination. It's a very small area on this particular bowl, but it just needs something. So. So I've just removed that inside edge to match the outside edge and now I'm just going to divot in between just a little bit.
just to give it some interest. And now this just needs sanding. And that is essentially the bowl turned now. As you can see the outside and the inside and the slight treatment on the rim. Uh, that is ready for a finish, uh, which I will do as a demonstration at the wood show today. Um, over the weekend, I will probably refinish this several times. So thanks for stopping by to watch me turn this bowl, and I hope that you guys got something out of this. And if you have any questions, or uh, if you want to come watch me put the finish on and remove the foot, maybe on the last day I'll remove the foot, um, stop by my booth, Woodsy Summercraft. Um, you'll find me there and I have all the finishes from Hampshire Sheen and Yorkshire Grit available um, and that's basically what I will be using to finish this bowl be using some colour and some embellishing waxes and a nice hard finish so that it's uh, food safe and you can go ahead and use it so thanks for watching enjoy the rest of the wood show take care bye